All right, so in the previous video, I uh, kind of did a walkthrough or overview of the latest OpenAI Dev Day and what you know were new, what was new and and things like that. So as promised, you know now we'll get into a little bit more of the uh, practical stuff, and I'll try to uh, show you you know how we can use the GPT-4 API. Probably most of you have already done this, uh, I assume, right? Uh, but uh, if you're watching this, then maybe you haven't. And so I also want to give you a little bit of um, sort of how I use it for, let's say you want to classify, uh, you want to tag something, then how do you set it up so that you can make quick inference calls to it? Um, you know, uh, and what if you get uh, to the rate limit and, and how to have, uh, sort of work around that? Um, so that you know you can do it faster uh, but also we'll take a look at how the api works and some um, some small i don't know like tips and tricks with it so first uh, i would look at this one uh, they have a lot of examples here as well and so on on this open ai uh, python uh, github repo so what you would do first you know pip install open ai and uh, We'll start with this um, this usage here, uh, and so we'll um, start with that, and we'll work from this. So, all right. So here's the the code, right? Copy pasted. Um, I'll put my API key here. Uh, you don't need to try it. I'm gonna delete it right after this video, but uh, yeah, just for showing it. So then we'll. Um, so we'll do from OpenAI, import OpenAI. Um, so now we want to uh, just set OS. So we'll do os.environ um, open. A yeah, there we go. So then we can remove this stuff and we can just have it like this. And uh, yeah, basically from here, um, we're running this client.chat.completions.create. Um, uh, and then we'll we'll have a role user say this is a test in this case we'll run gpt 3.5 turbo uh you know we can also there's also um the latest one uh i believe you know is preview 1106 or something like that we'll just use it for now but do check you know what the latest one is um so that you're using the best one. But so if we run this, then uh, we can look at chat completion and uh, to actually get like the text here, there's a lot of different ones, but we can do choices of zero uh, dot message dot content. So that's how we get the actual output. So we'll do that and let's create a, a function for this as well. So we'll call it call GPT. Uh, we'll specify, you know, the prompt, uh, the model name. Let's just put it to GPT 3.5 turbo as default. And we can return this to text string, right? Cool. So and also like one of the new things uh and we'll go through more of the new stuff as well right in the upcoming videos but one just small thing you can do now is you can set a seed another thing right you can set max tokens uh if you don't want it to output two long ones uh and there's some other stuff you can do as well you can also play around you know with the the temperature which is you know basically it has to do with the probability distribution of the sampling. So if you increase temperature, you'll basically rescale it so that the unlikely ones become more likely. Uh, so if you want to have fun, put this to 1.0, you'll get some fun stuff, some pretty creative ideas. Zero, zero is like the more precise one. And yeah, so these are just good default things. I would say so we can call uh, this uh, can do this and let's see what happens 
if it works. All right, cool. That was a long call for that. All right, we can also change this uh, model name. And the content here, right, should be the prompt. Uh, additionally, one thing that you often want to do is you want to have a system prompt to sort of describe what this system is. Like uh, maybe you're doing it for something specific. And so this, uh, this uh, can help. Um, Uh, maybe you're you're you know doing some very specific classification on a specific you might it might help to just say you know you are a expert in x you know so here we could do prompt uh, system prompt you are a chatbot all right cool oh you are a chatbot and then we can call gpt with this cool all right so th this works right um this is nothing like to this is just the basic stuff right and just how you use the api um what i actually want to show you that um i think the other stuff right if there's anything you're missing now you can probably just look it up um in the 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 keywords of you know what you can uh, change here if there's anything specific you want to modify i think these are the main ones uh perhaps you know the thing that i think is um the thing i've used the most is if you want to do multiple calls you want to do some classification let's say you have ten thousand examples it's going to take way too long if you just use a single call at a time so if we can optimize that by doing multi-threading and and stuff like that uh, that will help a lot so there's two things that we need to solve there the first is that we need to solve so that if in case our gpt calls gets rate limited so either if you make too many calls or if it generates too many tokens then uh we need to uh uh to to ensure that we our, the script doesn't fail Right, so one way of doing that is by using uh, tenacity. So you do retry, uh, wait exponential, and you do stop after attempt. Um, so then you do this. Uh, <laughs> so you do a context, um, uh, a decorator, retry, you set the weight to be weight exponential. Uh, the multiplier, uh, it'll basically be uh, two raised to the multiplier, where, so basically will be, first you'll wait for, I believe, two raised to zero seconds, or like instantly, right? And then you'll wait one second, and then two seconds, and then four seconds, and then eight seconds, you know? It will be two raised to the multiplier. So if it's one, it will be time, you know, times two every time um and then there's a minimum amount uh and be in between calls and then there's a maximum amount so i put it to 10 seconds i don't want to wait a, you know more than 10 in between trying to call again and then we can put you know a lot of uh attempts to try it um i would say you know play around a little bit with this but uh Maybe you would increase the max a little bit if it's a really long script or something. But this, I think, works pretty well in general. Um, so that's like the, the first thing uh, that solves the rate limiting thing. Uh, but probably, right, if you have... Um, let's say you would have a, a, a list. So let's do input texts, uh, texts list uh this is uh like we can do say this is a test and we can do that times you know let's do it times a thousand or i don't know times a hundred uh, and we want to do that for each right then we could do that one by one but it would be better right if we would do um a multi-threading so we would do multiple calls at the same time so uh, that's what I want to show you how to do. 
so for that we'll um uh, we'll use some different stuff so first we'll import a progress bar it's always nice to keep track of what we're doing and then we'll use the concurrent library uh dot futures i don't think there's any pip install that's like the standard python library but you need to do pip install tenacity for the other one all right cool so if we have that then uh, we can also do as completed so we'll do use these ones uh, and i'll be completely honest with you i don't know exactly how this works right i don't know what happens with how the multi-threading works and how it's being set up and, and you know all of these things and frankly i don't know if i want like need to learn that now all we want to know is like how we can do it so that it gets done faster right that's like kind of the main thing here so i might not be able to explain like the details of how exactly the multi-threading works so sorry about that um but we'll do two things so we'll do one function uh that will do save output and we'll do another one that's a main one so basically in the main one we'll set up all the calls we'll make and then we'll do we'll call a uh, save output which will basically do like one call to gpt uh, so and then save it so let's say you would do it to a csv file for example you want to save the file temporarily uh, at some periodic basis um but in the main file we set up all the jobs that we want to do and then each job gets sort of done in the in the i don't know i just call it save output but uh you know you can find a better name for it so first here in the in the main one we'll send in the uh input x list we'll send in the system prompt and we'll so, so, uh set the number of workers right obviously maybe for each of maybe if you have many different tasks you might want to do different system prompts and so on this is just an example sort of adapt it right to what you're doing but output results will do um, just none times times the length of the input so this is to keep track of the results we'll set it to none at the beginning um, and then uh, we will uh, store it at that list so we'll also do a progress bar Let's see if we can do that uh, like this we'll just do the total cool um all right so then we'll do uh you know with this thread pooler uh, let's see if we can get copilot to do it for us kind of hoping for that all right this is probably not correct let's see so we're doing with thread pooler max workers equals num workers as executors this is just uh so that we have number of workers uh which is set to one as default then we'll create basically the jobs um one thing here right that's not correct so we need to let's modify this first here we're gonna call the save output um so let's see in save output we are gonna send in an index we're gonna send an input text we're gonna send in a system prompt um and basically output uh results so we'll send in the list as well and then here we will first uh call gpt uh, call gpt and the thing input text and system prompt and then i want to modify so that we store it um, one important thing here is let's say that you're doing this for a csv file right if you're saving the file here uh because you want to keep track of all the intermediate results it's important that you uh do this import threading and you do a lock uh, so import threading lock equals threading dot lock and then here you will add with lock so this ensures that you're basically not saving the result multiple times uh sort of at the same time right because that can cause um an error with the file so yeah this is just one thing uh cool 
So then we'll do a future to index. That's just what I call it. It's basically like all the jobs. So let's walk through this. So we're creating a dictionary, executor.submit. We're going to call, uh, you know, this function save output uh, with index, input text, system prompt, output results. Uh, and we're going to do that for for all the input texts in our list. So here, and this is where I told you, you know, I don't know this exact details of how this works, right? We're basically creating all the jobs that we want to uh, do, right? Um, and that's going to be calling this function. Um, and then uh, we're going to basically iterate through them, you know, when they are completed. So for future in as completed future to index, we'll grab or we'll do a progress bar update. Uh, and then we'll do future dot result. Actually, I'm not sure. Okay, cool. This will raise an exception if one of the threads failed. Cool. All right. Um, I don't, we might not need that to be honest, but uh, yeah, that's it. And then we'll close the progress bar and we'll return the output results. Awesome. So basically, we're adding a progress bar update of one because we completed one job, and now I think we can call this. So we can do results equals main. And let's just compare it. So, I mean, if we run and by the way, remove this at the start because you never know, uh, right? You never know because it, it, there might be an issue and then you'll, it'll keep retrying. So, all right, this will take like one minute, right? We can stop this now. We can see that it works. It will take about one minute. And then if we increase the number of workers to 10, all right, so let's just do a, a very simple example to try that this works, right? If we do 10 examples, uh, if we set num workers to one, it'll run one at a time, uh, and it'll take about six seconds. I don't know if we put uh, four workers, uh, it'll go in one second, right? So basically, like, it'll improve a lot, and it'll improve more, you know, if we put 10 and, and so on. So, um yeah, I think this is a good place to, to start uh, and uh, a good default to, to sort of use. Uh, let me know if there are any questions on this. Um, this is what I've been using and it has worked for me. Uh, let's see also another thing, right, in the readme here, they also have like asynchronous usage. Uh, the asynchronous usage, right, that's kind of, it's useful if you're trying to do do other stuff. Uh, so if there's a certain API call that, you know, you're let's say you're in an app and you're wanting to get the weather weather or something, and then uh, you make that API call, but you don't want to kind of freeze the entire app while you're doing that API call. It might make sense to do that asynchronously. So you're making the call, but the, then you continue, right? Um, since we're doing the main thing here is to classify stuff, the async usage might not actually make that much sense, right? That's why I didn't put too much emphasis on it. Cool. All right. Uh, this was uh, the GPT-4 API. Hopefully it gave you some sense of how to use it. Uh, let's look at the uh, future videos on, you know, more details on how to use specific things uh, with the OpenAI stuff. All right. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.